Hi there, it's Donna from Tappy Crafting. Um, I'm an independent stamping up demonstrator and I make easy, simple, easy to follow tutorials for paper crafting, making boxes, cards, all sorts of things, bits of origami. So if you like that type of thing, come and subscribe, um, hit the bell so that you get notified every time I post a video. And I try and do a video three, sometimes four times a week if I can find the time. So we don't make anywhere near enough stuff for men um, or for people that don't like the fancy, pretty, florally stuff. So I've got something that's brown, um, but it's uh, it's ideal for, perhaps ideal for a fella or somebody that does not like all the fancy flowers. Um, and I really love the shape of this box. I got inspiration from a lady called Justina. And I can't find, oh yes, here it is. This was the original project that, um, that she gave. Um, and it was after a team retreat one September. Um, and it's this, I've had this a couple of years and it's got a little bit battered. Sorry, um, sorry, Justina. Um, and I wanted to have another go at it. And so this is my, this is my take on it. Um, and I just love the shape that this makes here. And I've just tried to mold the paper into that shape. Uh, but it's a really, really simple box to make and you can make it whatever size you like. So this one measures two and a half inches square all the way around. That's two and a half inches square and that is four inches high. And I've just secured the top just with a little peg. And you can fill that with quite a lot of stuff, lots of sweets. And so if, um, you know, if the recipient of this really likes sweet things, then you could fill that with quite a few of those. I haven't got any to put in here because... Um, there's no point in me keeping sweets, they just get eaten. Um, and I wouldn't actually have any sweets to put in here because I would have eaten them. Um, but there we go. But you can also secure that with, um, perhaps with a couple of holes and put some ribbon through it. But I, I quite like that peg on there. It's not stamping up though. Um, I just acquired them from um, just like an online, an online store. So let me show you how to make this. So I'm going to make one that's slightly smaller so that these two have been made from one sheet of 12 by 12 DSP. This is from the, I keep forgetting what it's called. It's just one of those things that won't stick in my head. I think it's called World Class. Or is it called World of Good? Oh, I can never remember. World of Good, I think it's called. I think it's because there's another one that's called Touch of Class. I think this is World Good world of good oh good grief anyway so this piece measures so this is going to be a box so this is two and a half inches square this box is going to be two inches square and it's going to be three and a half inches high so i've got a piece of dsp um, and this measures five and a half inches by eight and a half inches and then along the long side i've scored at two four six and eight and then on the short side, I've scored at three and a half. So now we need to make some cuts to this. So with my with my snips, the first thing we're going to do actually is fold and burnish. So this little tab here, that's the bit that holds it all together. So you've got this piece here, that's the bit that measures three and a half, and then this is two. So this, these rectangles, or these, sorry, these squares here, we're just going to start chopping into those. So there is your narrow rectangle, and you are going to cut up to the first score line. And then rather than just cutting across that score line, I'm actually going to cut diagonally into that corner. And then with this bit here, I'm just going to cut diagonally to that first score line there. And that's just a tab that will keep it all together. And then the rest of these, we're just going to cut up the score lines. Up to the first score line. see that score line so this all the measurements will be on my blog I'll leave a link to that in the description bar below and you could go along and subscribe to my blog 
where all the details of probably most of my YouTube videos are on there. So we have that. How easy was that? That's all you need to do with it as far as cutting and scoring is concerned. So on the right side, so this is the outside of your box, there's your little tab. And we're going to put some, I prefer to use tear and tape. You could use wet glue if you wanted to, but tear and tape is my adhesive of choice for this project. And I'm just going to run that right on that score line, which is extremely difficult to see. So take the um, backing paper off of that. Whoops, fold it back over. Fold this over so you've got your tab there and then fold this over. And if your scoring and your cutting has all been accurate, that raw edge should just sit straight on that folded edge like that. And mine could have been, can you see, I don't know if you can see that there. Mine could have been a little bit better. And you can if you want to, if you get something like that, which you know sometimes happens, sometimes our score lines can be off a little bit. You can just trim that. You just need a, just a slither off it, but you must be careful trimming that. Okay, but it's at the back of the box anyway. So there's our box and be aware of where that is because that's going to be the back of your box. So the next thing we're going to do is fold in the two side pieces. There's the back, there's that seam. Fold that forward and this one's going to come back. So we need to put some adhesive on this. This is such an easy box to make. I can't find the end of my paper, of the end of my glue. Um, you can make this in Christmas paper. Make this in any type of paper you want. Whatever would suit the recipient. Oh, I can't get that off. And then when you're going to fold that over, make sure that's nice and square. It's not squashed in any way. there's the bottom of our box okay so there's the back of it there so what we're going to do next to form that shape so you're going to hold onto your box with your thumbs here and your middle fingers there and take your index fingers and push that in and then start to squeeze it all together and I promise you it will do it evenly and that that matches like that so I'm just going to get something on there just to hold it all together you could use a bulldog clip if you wanted to and the reason I'm not using ribbon on this as well is that I just wanted it to be as, I shouldn't really say this, but to get it as masculine as possible. I didn't want ribbon on it. So I've just pushed that in and I'm just forming that shape there with my fingers. So again, just pushing that in. And you might just want to squeeze those just to get a nice crisp edge. It just forms that really lovely shape. So compared to the one that I just made, slightly smaller, it does depend what you're going to put in it. And I'm going to do a slight variation on this. So with this one, I used the large rectangle postage punch um, in early espresso and then just a piece of uh, rectangle, uh, just a rectangle, sorry, a very vanilla and stamped on it. This one I'm going to do slightly differently. And I've got a piece of early espresso and this measures one and a half inches by a little bit over two inches. So not quite two and an eighth, but it was more than two inches. Now, the reason I can't be specific about that is because I just wanted it to, I'll show you in a minute what I'm going to do with this. I'm going to punch this with the rectangle postage, um, large rectangle postage punch. But the first thing I'm going to do is stamp this in early espresso ink. And I've got to find my stamp. So I'm using the gift wrapped 
stamp. This comes from the new August to December catalogue, which goes live on the 4th of August. And I'm going to use this one just because I, I really like that because it's not necessarily for Christmas. It can be for anything. We don't need an excuse to send a gift to each other. So put that on my block and then I'm just going to stamp this onto some very vanilla in early espresso but your your colouring would depend on what DSP you're using and I'm going to make another one of these shortly I'm going to do um, one of those speeded up videos for Instagram and for Pinterest so fit that into your punch get it central And then with some, let's just check that fits in there. Yeah. Just with some mini dimensionals, I'm just going to stick this onto onto that piece of early espresso. Get that on there central. Ready then to put onto the box. And that just kind of, it's a little bit bigger than the box. Could have had it that way possibly, but it doesn't matter. So again, some dimensionals on the back of this. nice easy quick project if you wanted to make a few of these you could get all your dsp cut out the only thing i would say actually just while i'm thinking about it is that you need to watch the direction of your dsp so on the lot when you're looking at the um at your piece of dsp so if you have the long side there that you need the direction to go this way not that way okay otherwise it's just not going to look right so the longer side that's where your direction is going to go. If there's no direction on it like this, this is what I prefer to do sometimes. So I don't get into trouble with um, di um, direction on my paper. Um, that's why I particularly chose this, but um, just something to watch out for. The other great thing about this paper is well, it's got lines on it. So I can make sure that everything's lined up. There you are, super simple. And you know, you don't necessarily have to use um, these labels. You could use a circle. Um, punches there are the love heart punches you could put a flower on there and maybe hang a label from here anything you like but that just gives you an idea of something that you can do for somebody if you don't want to use something super pretty super feminine this is something for somebody who doesn't want all the pretty stuff so thank you ever so much for joining me and i'll be back again soon bye bye <laughs>